My name is Marcus John Henry Brown, and I'm a performance artist who hacks business conferences with performance art. Well, I did until this bloody virus came along. It's changed your life, your job, and it's changed mine too. It's forcing us to rethink, and reconsider, and yes, it's forcing us to rebuild. I'm here today to talk about what all that means to me as a performance artist and what my work, my art can and might have to be in the future. I'm here to talk about the new context for performance. I'm here to talk about the tiny box. This is me in 2013. It's not my first talk, but it was my first appearance at the Republica in Berlin. Just look at me with a stupid beard and a fake Rolex. Ridiculous. Trying really, really hard to be a keynote speaker. This wasn't my first outing as a speaker, but I like to think that it was my most important for two reasons. Firstly, I realized that conference stages with all of the tech, all of the support, the huge screen, the massive stage, and an audience that had paid money to sit down in the audience and look at what you were doing was a massive opportunity. It was an opportunity to do something incredible, exciting, relevant, and subversive. A conference could be my chance to turn my digital characters and my digital performances into real life performances on a real life stage. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I had a gut feeling that it could be done. The second reason was a dented ego. Now, this is Cory Doctorow, and it's his keynote on stage one of the Republica 2013. It's on exactly the same time as I'm doing mine. Him on stage one and me on stage three. I spent the rest of the 2013 Republica watching as many talks as I possibly could, specifically those on stage one. And on a journey back home to Munich, I decided that I would follow a dream. I would set up my own business that would be largely financed by performances at business conferences and that I would one day perform on stage one. You are the last batch. You are the last catch. This is your last test. This is your last chance to flex. This is me, last year, stage one, center stage, with my hour-long performance called Flex. It took me seven years to get there. Seven years and eight performances two of which I'm delighted to say I have performed at the 48 Forward. And if you were there and saw them, I hope you enjoyed them. Thank you so much for coming. It was a pleasure to do. I set up my business in June 2014. And by the end of 2019, I'm delighted to say that the lion's share of the revenue was made up of the performances and around consultancy for people who wanted to learn the stagecraft of performing on business conference stages and building new live formats and ideas for corporate clients. Everything I was doing was based around a live event. And then the virus hit us and stopped the entire world in its tracks. To be honest, I felt a little bit like Blockbuster or Kodak. My business had been disrupted but by a virus. And it wasn't just me, it was the entire event ecosystem. So photographers, videographers, sound technicians, lighting technicians, stage designers, uh, uh, caterers, hotels, sponsors, and of course, event organizers themselves, all hit by the virus. We all went through the cancellation tsunami. Now I'm recording this on the 28th of April 2020 and this is how I feel. I feel lost. I feel angry. I feel like I've lost my language. I feel like I did 28 years ago when I came to Germany. I couldn't speak German and when I realized that I had to learn German, the world came crashing down around me. I'd lost a skill set that was so incredibly important to me. 
I used to cry myself to sleep at night because it was so frustrating. I felt useless and rubbish, and that's how it feels again. I've lost my live audiences, the stages, the shazam and the magic of a physical live event. I was supposed to be doing something exciting for you here in Munich on a big stage, on the biggest stage that we actually have here in Munich. And Daniel and the entire 48 Forward team had put together an incredible schedule for you all. But I'm here in this box. I'm stuck in this bloody box. I'm stuck in the tiny box. Make it Suntory time. Uh, why do you not step in my car? One of my favorite films is a film called The Vanishing. I'm talking about the original from 1988, not the remake from 1993. That's terrible. It's a film about a psychopath who kidnaps a woman and the story of the husband who's trying to find out what happened to her. The psychopath gets in touch with the husband and shows him exactly what happened to her. That's right, he put him in a tiny box. Now I suffer uh, from claustrophobia, which is why I think The Vanishing is probably the scariest film ever made. But right now, right at this point in time in our lives, I'm suffering from something that I like to call digital claustrophobia. Me being in this tiny digital box makes me feel incredibly uneasy. Seeing you all in your Zoom boxes makes me feel incredibly awkward. Apologize, I'm late uh, for the meeting. Um, I'm new to the company. Seeing the Rolling Stones in their tiny digital boxes, that makes me feel queasy and very uneasy. I don't want to see the Rolling Stones in tiny digital boxes. <laughs> My performances had space, lots of space, a huge amount of space where I could sing, where I could dance, and where I could move. I could see the audience sitting down in front of the stage, and I can't see that anymore. I'm stuck in this box and this box has its own rules, its own context, and I'm still trying to work out what those rules are and what that context is and what it could be, what I can do with it, how I can subvert it, how I can break the rules and do things that we've never done before in a performance or in a talk. I could, for example, run an advert right in the middle of this talk. A wicked pack of cards printed on a gloriously soft paper. Available now at Amazon. Even though I'm feeling lost and cross and angry, I am actually feeling quite optimistic because I can see that there is another journey before me. I'm trying to understand the opportunities, but I'm at the phase where I can only at this point see what's been taken away from me. I've just come off of stage three, it's 2013 again, and I can see that there's another seven years worth of work to get me back on stage one, center stage of the tiny digital box. And I've always struggled to understand what kind of artist I am, what kind of artist I want to be, and what kind of art I want to make. So the frustration of having losing something that actually worked has now released me to create more new stuff. And I find that strangely invigorating and does in fact leave me with a strange sense of hope. I know that I can trust my own process in pretty much the same way that you can trust in yours. I know that I'll do the research. I'll watch all of the old MTV Most Wanted stuff from Ray Cox, and I'll spend huge amounts of time watching Dr. Disrespect on Twitch to figure out how he does all the things he does. And eventually I'll find my thing, the new thing. And even though it's slightly frustrating that I have to start all over again, it's not the end of the world which is why I'm strangely optimistic. I'm optimistic about finding my own way, my new way, my way in this tiny box. And I really generally hope that you'll find your own way too. So I'd like to leave you with a quote from one of my favorite artists, Gerhard Richter. Art, he says, is the highest form of hope. Thank f
I'm an artist and I encourage you to be one too. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day and stay safe. Bye-bye.